Let's go, Arkansas fans. We get some scrimmage action, baby. Yes, sir. And today, I want you in the comments section. At the end, I will tell you my answer. Who is the number one wide receiver on this team, right? Could it be Isaiah Satania, who had a very dominant session here? We'll talk about that coming up. And yeah, let's get into it. You get a very bad snap here. And this is a good play by Davilair. Nico, number zero, does yeah, look, you could see actual players were moving before the ball was even snapped. So this would have been a false start anyway. That also, uh, that little half second also blew up this timing as well. So part of this is on the quarterback. Part of it is just on the rhythm of how you're actually running your plays. And that's what you're going to get in spring, okay? Ball is just all over the place. And in this situation, I prefer my quarterback just to eat it. Um, because that handoff oftentimes is going to get fumbled. All right, so then on the very next play, Addison Nichols gives you a worm burner, right? A daisy cutter on the ground. Just an awful snap, and they actually blow the whistle before any of this even got going. It's just bad. So what does Bobby Petrino do? He says, we're going under center. We got to actually get some work in. We're burning daylight. Uh, we're going to JJ's after this. Let's get some work. Let's see. We get a little play action fake. And, oh, yeah, I like this. Get this football out to your speedster in the flat. And you get a nice gain right there. All right, we then get to here. And it is, yet again, another bad snap. But one thing that is kind of encouraging about this is the pistol. I might be in the minority but if I was a play caller I would run a lot of stuff out of pistol I, I just would I love that formation because you get you know a mixture of shotgun and under center with the running back being directly behind you right so if you enjoy these breakdowns don't forget to hit that subscribe button ring the bell and if you want to support us financially, hit that super thanks Venmo cash app at Carter the Power. You know, once again, it's cut off, so real vertical stuff you really can't see. So you're running something deep with uh, Armstrong over here, who's going to be potentially your best offensive player, period, next year, either him or Haas. And, you know, you, you have, obviously, Isaiah Satania here in the slot at the... Inside receiver here is Tyrone Broden, obviously had the big catch versus Florida to win it last year. And you have Varkis Gums actually here on the outside. So if you're the quarterback and you have Gums out here, you're tight in, and you have a corner in Braxton matched up on Gums, this should be an indication that this is going to be some variation of zone. Okay, and what does Arkansas do? They actually run a very static zone, and they're able to get home with four. Okay, looks like we're running... Uh, a dig right here with Broden, and we have like a little out from the slot right here from Isaiah Satania. Could this be thrown right here? Yeah, but it's it's difficult if you're the QB, right? If there is an experienced corner just sitting and then picking up this, you're always afraid that if you throw it, one could come through here and, and pick that. So in theory, this could have been ripped, but it's not going for much. Could this dig have been thrown? It's impossible to see if there's a linebacker sitting right there. So pressure just gets home, and it's a sack. Uh, could he have worked to Jaquinda Jackson in the flats? Maybe so, but this is normally how scrimmages go in spring, right? Especially if you have a new quarterback, new center. The timing of everything is just pitiful. Okay, so now we get to here. Okay. Here he is, and, okay, this is good offense. This is really, really, really good offense, okay? Um, one thing I've noticed, and, and one, this is a very, very small sample size. Once again, it's just scrimmages. I have noticed uh, just through the early portions that all the Arkansas quarterbacks are doing a good job of throwing the football over the middle. And in particular in college football, quarterbacks over the middle – tend to struggle okay now why is throwing over the middle important in the modern day game well Bobby Petrino knows way more about offense so he knows this well teams are running a lot more too high coverages right which means there's two deep safeties and a byproduct of two deep safety football 
is the second intermediate level of the defense becomes softer and in particular over the middle so these are nfl statistics well this past year uh, obviously we've, we're seeing growing rates of too high coverages uh, in all levels of football and this past year in the nfl 44 percent of the time the intermediate middle of the field was open okay versus too high looks so why is that important well, you got to be able to take advantage of the middle. And if you have a taller quarterback like Green, he can see over the middle better than your average QB. So even with a wide receiver like uh, Satania, who's not really a slot inside type of guy, he's more of an outside burner, with his size, he can be a good slot receiver. All right, so this will get charted up to an incompletion, but man, 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 this is really sexy offensive football, okay? Uh, my favorite running back on the team is out here, okay, in Jaquindon Jackson, and we're in pistol, okay? This is, a, once again, I'm just a big pistol fan because of the play action and run game you can get out of pistol, right? Um, you know, in pistol, in theory, it limits the distance from the quarterback to the snapper, and it just provides the defense more uh, concern about which way the actual running back can go. So before we get into the routes, let's discuss what happens here. Play action fake. And let's start with Jaquindon Jackson. He's going up against Spence here, 22 on 22 action. And look at this protection. Okay, Spence decides to play patty cake and go way around uh, Jaquindon here. And look at what Jackson does. Completely washes him out the play. Okay, I can argue that that could have been uh, this initial punch right here could have been a little bit more physical, but that is just really good stuff. It really is. Now, let's take a look at the protection across the way here as well. This is a seven-man protection scheme where Arkansas keeps the Danish tight end in to block. Remember, Devalier, number zero, had been killing them up to this point. You double right here, and look at this finish. That's nasty, nasty stuff. Posky and number 54 playing right tackle for Arkansas here is uh, Keyshawn Blackstock. All right, good stuff, Keyshawn. Now, we get to the guard and the center. Get a double right here. Good stuff. So, you have a, a double right here. You have a double right here. Where this play needs to be made are the one-on-one -on -one blocks. So, we already talked about Jaquindon Jackson. Look at this. Carmona has, you know, Landon Jackson in a phone booth. All right? Ball the three tech going up against uh, the left guard right here. He's getting dominated. Okay, he's out of his pass rush lane. Just wash him up the field. So, the protection here is really good. And part of the reason why is because you're able to marry the play action out of pistol. That delays the defensive reaction to a certain extent. And just the offensive line right here is just whip and tail. So, that's good stuff. Now, let's get into the actual route concepts here. Once again, it's tough to see. But let's just focus on the primary here. We have... Andrew Armstrong going up against a younger Braxton, uh, number 11 right here. Had the big pick six versus Florida, but, you know, he had some rough moments in the Auburn game and so on and so on, okay? This is a very difficult route concept that Armstrong's trying to, um, you know, complete here. He's running a corner route, but notice the leverage here. He's trying to get to the outside right here, and Braxton has him shaded to the outside. So, we don't get the full route, but just know how difficult this is for a wide receiver, okay, to run a corner. You've got to really sell, and you can see, this is really good stuff right here. You can see his head is pointed in this direction. That's to make Braxton think he is running it over, but at some point off this camera, he actually cuts back this way. That's really nuanced stuff. All right, so now we get to the throw, okay? This has just got to be completed. And there's just no other way around it. It's a difficult throw. It's a cross-hash throw. And, you know, could this have been sped up right here? Quarterback gurus, let me know. Uh, it, the footwork's a little cut off, if you ask me. But it's it's no matter what, if you have this clean of a pocket and you have your best receiver in a matchup that you want, we've got to give this receiver more real estate. This is burnt toast right here. Especially when you factor in the leverage, that's good stuff. The ball location is actually good, okay? And Armstrong's actually getting pulled right here. Um, the ball location is is good 
Could we have dragged our feet and timed this a little bit better? No, the ball is just way too to the outside. So you just got to speed that up. But overall, don't just focus on the end result of the play. The design was good. Uh, the ball location was good. The protection was good. It just needs to be sped up, and that's an explosive pass play that Arkansas uh, was was def- uh, definitely missing uh, last year. But that is what happens when 10 out of 11 players do their job. You just need the most important player, the QB, to, to, to get that ball into a good spot. Now we get to the touchdown here, okay? And, God, this is just good stuff. Now this is a really Really good throw. Um, man, uh, you, you, you've probably seen this already on social media. Love this play design right here from Bobby, okay? Um, he does a lot of motions to outnumber uh, people to certain sides of the field. So it looked as if this was trips to this side. But now it's, uh, well, let's see. I couldn't see this other receiver. But... Nevertheless, you have, once again, motion uh, Isaiah Satania. So remember, you've been motioning him and just running quick flat routes. But this time, you're going to do an out and up. And this is a very difficult throw for Taylor Green. So you get a play action fake. You got the defense flowing this way. And what you want to do here, you're running a post here, okay? And your post job right here is to pull the safety with them. All right, so you're showing flat right here, and then now you're cutting up. All right, so you can see Taylor Green throwing against his body. Look at this ball location. Bang, right in stride. And you'll see he almost gets over here and makes his play, but still a good throw, good catch. Kind of a tough play to evaluate without, you know, having the, the, the full realm of vision right there. But man, this is good stuff. It really, really, really is. And I actually, I don't, I don't think this was three. I'm, I'm doing a bunch of guessing, obviously. Uh, Armstrong uh, was wide open here if you wanted it, but you're running to the left. Uh, and I think Braxton just peeled off of Armstrong once he saw that the ball was thrown. Uh, but man, this is just good stuff. You want to be taking these chances uh, down the field. Who cares if it gets picked off? Um, and Satania scores. Good, good, good offense right here. So who is the best wide receiver on Arkansas's team? Well, it's tough to answer. I'm going to give you my thoughts here in a second. But first, Dodge Challenger, thank you for your generosity here at the Hundo Super Chat. I really, really appreciate it. I'm independent, and most of the money I make is you guys watching the videos and, and super chats and all that stuff. Uh, and super thanks. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Cause I feel like we're going to get quite a few after this awesome, awesome breakdown. So once again, gums was open there. If you get a good snap, okay, I'll show you the replay here. All right. Um, both of these linebackers bite on this tight end and look at this. Okay. Maybe Bob Petrino has been watching this channel. I've been begging Arkansas to run more 12 personnel because they have a deeper tight end room than most teams, and their wide receiver room is relatively shallow. So part of this wide receiver debate is, will Arkansas run more 12? And what makes this very interesting is their two best tight ends aren't even scrimmaging, um, uh, which is obviously Ty Washington and Lucas. So this is Varkis Gum and the Danish uh tight end right here he draws both of these defenders and you'll see gums is open in the flats unless a corner is just right here uh, he would have gotten this football and had gums right here now i do see him you know cut upfield so maybe it was an out and up but that would have been open and you can even see this backer looking over here now this was Taylor green's last snap we are going to do a separate video with Jacoby Criswell and obviously Malachi Singleton breaking down all their reps from this scrimmage. But for me, I, I still think Andrew Armstrong is the guy. I really do think so. But, you know, obviously with the Bobby Petrino offense, whether it's running back, tight end, wide receiver, he does spread it around. So he's going to need multiples, right? Obviously, uh, it was mostly Broden, number five, and Satania running with the ones. You see Isaac Tesla, who is mostly a starter next year. So you do have some competition, some familiarity. Uh, all four of those wide receivers are on the team, you know, the year before. Uh, obviously, the new uno of this offense is number one, Jaden Wilson. 
He obviously had a few plays last year, so I still think Armstrong is their best receiver, and I think he's going to have a pretty good season if Sam Pittman can fix this snapping problem. Just find someone that, uh, that could get the snap back there. Like we said on the very first snap, I don't think that was really the center's fault. That was more timing, um, but it's just it, even then that was a, a rough, inaccurate snap, and there was a lot of other bad snaps, so that's got to get fixed. But I do feel protection-wise, they've looked okay in these sessions. But once again, it's not a game session. And that's what I always want to say. It's just, there, there's not too much you could take away from spring football. It is just spring football. And obviously, I'm not a coach. I'm not in the meeting rooms. I don't know progressions or anything like that. These are all my best educated guesses. So let me know what you guys think of the wide receiver debate and bang, floating in your face, some other practice breakdowns and potentially the part two scrimmage breakdown. It is power out SEC. Boom. And tonight we are doing salmon. Let's go.